Hello, and welcome to a presentation on dipoles and the ECG by Ranjit Outwall and Minal Modi. In this short presentation, we're going to explain the concept of an electric dipole and how voltage measurements at the surface of a patient are related to the phases of the cardiac cycle. To understand this, first of all, we need to understand the conduction within the heart. Action potentials begin at the sinoatrial node and travel across the atria, causing contraction as it does. The electrical signal then makes its way to the AV node slowly, giving the atria time to finish contracting. They then pass rapidly down into the atrioventricular bundles, which spans the length between the AV node and the interventricular septum before splitting into the right and left bundle branches, which reaches the apex of the ventricles. Action potentials travel into the interventricular wall by travelling out through the Purkinje fibres. These emerge from the bundle branches and together the electrical signals cause rapid contraction of the atria and ventricles separately. Understanding the direction of the dipole change is one of the most important parts of, of the ECG. So let's have a look at dipoles. An electric dipole is a pair of equal and opposite charges, Q plus and Q minus. If these are separated by a distance d, this becomes a dipole moment, which is a measure of the separation of the positive and negative charges in a system of charges. This is defined as QD. Here is a resting muscle cell. There is an excess of sodium ions and calcium ions outside the cell, and an excess of chloride ions inside the cell, causing a dipole moment. Moving across from the inside to the outside of the cell. Each individual dipole moment has an opposite dipole moment on the other side of the cell, and therefore the overall dipole moment of the cell is zero. The initiation of an action potential causes a rush of ions across the membrane to try and achieve equilibrium values. The potential difference at the left hand side of the cell causes the adjacent part of the cell membrane to allow ions in. The electrical impulses are carried through the cells of the heart with charges moving through the special channels called gap junctions, found at the connections called intercalated discs. This wave of depolarization sweeps down the cell from left to right and the individual dipole moments across the cell do not cancel each other out and there is a net dipole moment of the cell pointing in the direction of the wave of depolarization. The ECG represents the heart as a single moving dipole which is free to rotate and change amplitude. The ECG measures the projection of the dipole vector. The simplest ECG uses three leads in a formation around the heart known as Einthoven's triangle. Lead one measures the projection from the right arm to the left arm. Lead two measures the projection from the right arm to the left leg and lead 3 measures the projection from the left arm to the left leg. The movement of electrical charge towards the positive electrode will result in a positive deflection on the ECG, and the movement of electrical charge towards the negative will result in a negative deflection. The movement of the impulse perpendicular to the line between the positive and the negative electrodes will result in zero deflection. We can use this information and the following diagrams to explain the three lead wave formations of an ECG. When there are no action potentials, there is no net dipole moment, 
Therefore, no voltage change is measured in all three leads. After the electrical activation of the heart has begun at the sinoatrial node, it spreads along the atrial walls. The white arrows along the leads represent the direction and the magnitude of the voltage change measured in each lead. The resultant ECG measurements are next to each lead. The thick yellow arrow represents the resultant vector of the electrical activity. The green arrows represent the movement of the resultant vector over time. As the atria repolarizes, there is a negative deflection in all leads as the charge moves in the opposite direction. At 220 milliseconds, as a septum depolarizes, the resultant electrical charge moves away from the direction of the leads 1 and 2, so there's a negative deflection, whereas there's a positive deflection in lead 3. And at 230 milliseconds, as the dipole moment moves towards the apex, there is a positive deflection in all three leads. And at 240 milliseconds, due to the large volume of ventricular tissue and its increased conductivity in comparison to the atrial tissue, there's a great rise in the change of the magnitude in the ECG trace. At 250 milliseconds, as the movement of the dipole moment moves away from the apex to up and around the ventricle walls, the dipole moment moves away in direction from all three leads, causing a negative deflection. As the depolarization wave in the ventricles heads back around to the atria, you get a positive deflection in lead 3. As ventricular repolarization occurs at around 450 milliseconds, the ventricles repolarize from the apex upwards and there is a opposite movement of the dipole moment direction compared to the depolarization wave. Therefore, there is a positive deflection in leads 1 and 2. However, it is moving away from lead 3, causing a negative deflection. As the ventricles completely repolarize after 600 milliseconds, the heart reaches a resting stage again and the ECG returns to the baseline. A summation of all these uh, ECG traces can be used to form a normalised ECG trace. Here you can see the P wave, which represents the depolarization and the contraction of the atria, and then the QRS complex, which represents the depolarization of the ventricles. The ST interval represents the contraction of the ventricles. The T wave, the ventricular repolarization. And the U wave is normally only visible in 50 to 75% of ECGs. But that represents the repolarization of the papillary muscles and the Purkinje fibers. As mentioned, this represents a normalised trace for a heart contraction for the majority of the population. Changes in the wave formation or duration are indicative of underlying pathological problems. And relating these pathological changes to the changes visualised on the ECG help clinicians diagnose the underlying causes, thus demonstrating why the ECG is a very simple yet essential tool in diagnostics. Thank you very much for listening.